Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Odd Topic Podcast. I'm joined here today by the hostess with the mostest, oh yeah. Brett Beckerman. What's up? And then of course, myself. <laughs> um, today's going to be a really cool episode, as I hope they all are, to be honest. But today is especially make cool, content, because as I like to say at the beginning of every episode, this is one of my favorite topics, really close <laughs> to my heart. <laughs> Starting to notice a little bit of a trend. <laughs> Definitely a trend. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so today I'm planning on talking about um, deep sea and all sorts relating to all sorts of things relating to the sea and cool experiences I've had. Uh, I'll be talking a bit about my experience of scuba diving. Brett's gonna cover a really cool. Uh, can you say well, what was a cryptid at some point, then soon became reality? Yeah, a living fossil. A living fossil. You probably already know what we're talking about, but we'll get to that. Before we dive head first into, <laughs> no, our, into our main topic. Didn't. Um, tell me about today, Brett. It was rough, man. Why? Well, what happened? Well, everything I prepared for this podcast um, <laughs> is not here. <laughs> Old Rat Spock over here left all of his notes and stuff at home. <laughs> I literally like moved all of my like equipment and that into like a new bag to make it easier and more like compact. Yeah. I need to unpack everything and realize the most important thing isn't here. Yeah. <laughs> And I was a bit a bit worried because I'm doing a bit of construction at my place, and luckily the guys moved out in time. But it was abs- absolute chaos on the other side of the house. Luckily, this little secluded studio that we have here is this little nice and clean, secluded studio, <laughs> secluded estate. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, yeah. Anyway, let's let's as I said before, dive right in. Now, Brett, what are your experiences with the ocean? I'm petrified of it. Makes sense, coming from Transcar. Yeah, yeah. I'm from the land. <laughs> um, uh, my experience with the ocean are pretty much solely surrounded by uh, deep sea fishing, where mm-hmm. I got horribly sick and then never did it Ooh. again. I hate sea sickness, dude. Especially, <sighs> like, the worst for me is when you're on the water, on the boat, and you're just bobbing up and down yeah. the waves. Oh, it kills me. I once went, um, I don't know if it's deep sea fishing, but sea fishing, um, off the coast of Port Alfred. Um, my dad had just got his skipper license okay and uh he was trying that out you know i think we went out to see all of maybe 10 times total i only went once and got horribly sick um but anyway we, we went out and this, this isn't part of the main story by the way this is a cool little anecdote we went out and um probably for about 20 minutes or so i was out there um of course i didn't catch anything <laughs> i was probably like 12 or something i don't know and my dad was there also not really having much luck Oh, no, wait. And then I'm moaning and I'm like, dad, I'm sick. Please, I want to go back. This the is the worst thing ever. Why are you making me do I'm this? I'm going to throw up. I think I did throw up. And then my dad's like, oh, God, stupid guess, <laughs> stupid ass kid. And he probably didn't say that. But he thought anyway, so we, <laughs> he did, <definitely laughs> thought. Um, so we, we start the boat and we start driving back to the marina. And um, out of nowhere, this massive whale tail just comes plunging oh, no. out of right next to us, dude. It was insane. It's like what you see in the movies and all yeah. that shit. It was, it was honest to God happen. We obviously freaked the fuck out. We had no idea it was there. You're not supposed to be driving a boat that close to, to whales. Um, no, not at all. But I mean, not, we had no idea it was there. It wasn't really our fault. It just kind of breached or something. Damn whales. Well, I don't know what it's called. Like I know they're different poses of different names. Breaching is the whole body out of yeah. the water. Uh, mm. A tail is uh, just, just being a dick. <laughs> <laughs> having a joy it was time. a bit of a dick <laughs> but it, that was pretty cool so that kind of made the whole trip for me um i felt a bit better on the way home having seen that yeah <laughs> but anyway so i'm su- super passionate about scuba diving you're super passionate about all things fish and marine and, and all that hence my my pretty big fish tank in the other room there it's one of my passions i love coral reefs and marine diving and everything also freshwater stuff's cool too um, in terms of tank keeping, but I don't really care for fishing in rivers. Yeah. But I'm not really a fishing kind of guy. I'm you're not a, a fishing guy. You, guy. You're more of a like conservative, uh, likes to look at it rather type of guy. That conservative, he does not mean political belief. Don't at me, bro. No, no, no. <laughs> conservative <laughs> is an environmental belief. <laughs> um, yeah, but for, for, for those of you at home, Luke has the most intense, like, um, kind of fish tank marine setup. I don't know the classic terminology of anything. It intense. just looks intense cool. Intense is a good one. I like it. I'm going to go with intense uh, <laughs> with all the lights and everything. Um, well, if you take a cool. look, if you're at home listening, take a look at our Instagram page. You'll see some pictures of it. We can pull that it up true. for this episode. We'll put it up um, then. You can have a look. Look, it's a bit of a work in progress. It's definitely not the most flashiest tank in the world. 
Um, it's still pretty dope though. It was a lot better in my opinion about two years ago and then I moved house and ever since trying to start it up again, it's never quite been the same, but I've got a couple of corals that are doing really nicely and I like my selection of fish. Yeah, when I, when I first met you, it was probably the coolest thing. Mm, it was dope. Yeah. I had that powder blue tang, which was notoriously hard to keep, but man, he was my favorite. Um, but I had to actually sell him eventually because I moved and I knew he probably wasn't going to survive the move. Um, Even though you moved uh, how many houses away from your previous house? It's about literally five houses away. <laughs> you can walk <laughs> to Luke's old house. Very easily. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm big into fish and big into scuba diving. Um, obviously, from when I was a kid, uh, my dad was really big into it. Um, really good scuba diver. He was with a scuba diving school called Naui, which I think, I don't know if it still operates anymore. Or it's definitely not as popular as Paddy for those scuba diving nerds. Um, but anyway, I, I used to, when I was a kid, go with my parents. We, we used to go to like all sorts of diving places, Maldives, Mauritius, Ooh, nice. Madagascar, Zanzibar, Mozambique, kind of tropical island yeah, places. Yeah. Um, well, it was awesome. really cool. Super cool. For like half of those, I was too young to actually dive. Um, so I just used to snorkel. Uh, no shame on, on snorkel gang, obviously, <laughs> because it's really cool. And you can see a lot of great stuff snorkeling. There's nothing, nothing wrong with it. I haven't. Well, I suppose I have. It's going to lead into my next story, but I haven't really starved with sharks um, per se. I think I've seen one nurse shark lying on the bottom of the floor. Uh, yeah, um, I, for, for us in South Africa, um, came might lead onto this a little bit later, but uh, we're kind of close to Cape Town, and Cape Town is quite well renowned for the fact of it's the only place where great white sharks breach the water. Mm. Um, you can't see that anywhere else in the world. I think there's been one or two in Australia that they've mm. seen, but generally, as far as I understand, it's the only place in the world where great white sharks breach the water. Obviously, um, they kind of yeah. are going for prey and all that. I think, uh, yeah, pretty much a, a huge amount of the pictures that you see online of all those cool sharks yeah, yeah, yeah. Catching seals, that's, that's right here, yeah. man. Um, so I did my open water one course, um, but that's kind of limiting. You can only get to about 18 meters and you can't do okay. shipwrecks and caves and night dives, that sort of uh, thing. Fair enough. I did eventually get my advanced divers, um, certification as well. But for, at this point in time, for this, the story, I pretty much fresh just got my open water one. Would you ever dive at night though? Uh, no. That seems super freaky to me. It's really cool because all the cool crustaceans come out at night. Okay. So your mantis shrimp, your crazy crabs, lobsters, all that, all that nice stuff. And like. A lot, of, a lot of octopi, um, and yeah, so so there's a whole kind of different set of creatures to see, but personally, it freaks me the fuck out. I haven't done Second a night that. dive, and I don't really want to do a night no. dive. Um, I want to see them pretty corals and colors. I don't want to see freaky stuff coming at me out of nowhere. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, but I mean, some people like it for the thrill, you know? <laughs> um, anyway. So at the time now, I just got my, my open water one. Um, and one of my really good family friends um, who were also incredibly into diving, there was a family of divers. You know them quite well. I won't say the name of the oh, podcast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so fa family of divers. They always had the latest gear. They always had the best stuff when on holidays, like all over the place, um, whenever they could. Um, and then so on, on one holiday, they asked me if I'd like to tag along, having just got my diver certification. Of course, I'm like, sweet. Where are you going? <laughs> oh, yeah. Mozambique, which is kind of just off the border of South Africa. Yeah. And we went to a place called Ponte de Ora, which is quite, um, quite sort of south uh, of Mozambique. So it's like right on the border. Really, it's about a day's worth of travel or so. Right, so it's quite important for the story that, you know, these people are like diving fanatics and I'm the newbie, okay? Just, okay. just big. Keep that in mind. Um, so all I brought along was like my wetsuit and my own like goggles and fins. Then I just rent whatever equipment's there at the dive, yeah. um, whatever association, dive shack. <laughs> Actually, we surprised they're pretty much called dive shacks. <laughs> That's where I got Almost that always, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so it was our first dive out uh, and we are, we're on this like raggedy old rubber duck. Rubber duck, uh, is that a South African term? Uh it's like a, like a rubber boat, one of those inflatable boats. Yeah. Um, I, think I think they are rubber ducks everywhere else. Uh, yeah. I'm not talking about the ones that float in your bathtub kind of thing. Yeah, not one of those like little... Uh, um, but yeah, it was this, this janky old thing. Anyway, so we, we go out there onto the ocean. And now again, I get seasick on the surface, but once I'm in the water, I'm fine. So I'm on the surface now trying to, let's, let's go, guys. And you get into the water. Um, and yeah, we, we all gear up and everything. Everyone's ready to... Their, backward somersault into the into the water um cool and away we go um so yeah but now i've got a bit of a problem where i've got a quite small 
eustachian tubes, which is your basically your um, the line between your ears and your nose, it's like okay. nasal nasal oh, pathways. Oh, okay, yeah. And that's quite cr- quite crucial for for diving because you have to equalize as you go underwater. Equalizing is basically um, acclimating to the pressure okay. as you go down, and you can do it by the most common way is to hold your nose. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You basically, if your if your ears popped, you've equalized. Yes. You, you can do it above land as well. Like if you yawn, sometimes you yeah, you like go up like a hill, go down to mm. a thing. Yeah, same thing. Yeah, you know. but it's very important because it, without being able to do it, you can't really go down. Okay, it, it ends up getting really pressurized in your head, and it gets really sore. So you have to take it easy and go down. And being a, like a newbie diver, not very good at it yet, and I got messed up eustachian tubes. So. First dive, needless to say, was not very successful. So I was going down there. I just couldn't get down. And my ears were on fire. Um, and my head was going to explode. I was like, okay, no, I can't. Sorry. So feeling very sorry for myself, I get back into the boat. Um, and everyone else is now enjoying their dive. So here I am, myself and this creepy skipper <laughs> on, this, on this boat, just bobbing up and down the water, me getting, getting increasingly more seasick. Um, so yeah, this is about... I went on for about 10 minutes and suddenly the skipper turns to me and he goes, get in the water right now. I'm like, oh shit. And now my first thought is like fucking sea pirates, bro. <laughs> or like, or like uh, our, our torpedoes coming at us. What's happening? I'm like, get in the water. I'm just like hesitating. He looks at me again. And he goes, get in the water. There's a whale shark right here. I'm like, oh shit. So and I, I, and I, I'm, I'm like, I think I was 14 or 15. Okay. Um, and like petrified of everything. That <laughs> moves, you know? And I'm like, Whale here, shark? <laughs> get, and this dude's yelling at me to get in the water. I'm like, ah, I, probably, I probably peed myself, grabbed my goggles. and just, Which is great for water <laughs> diving. <laughs> great. Sharks love it. <laughs> Rolled back into the water, goggles on, didn't have a tank or anything with me. Uh, that was still on the boat. And I'm looking and I, I see nothing. It's just this vast expanse of, of blue, which is very creepy in its own right. It's, yeah. I hate just, ugh. anyway. Not knowing what's below you. There's a lot of stuff I hate about the ocean, but someone <laughs> that really likes the ocean. Anyway, so I see abs- absolutely nothing. I'm like, okay, this guy's talking shit, man. What's, what's happening here? And then I feel this like sort of um, rush of water at the back of my head. And I do like a 180, and there's this huge whale shark right behind oh, me. Oh, dang. It was epic, dude. It was I say huge. It was huge to me, but uh, looking back on it now, I think it was quite like quite a um, a, a youngling. Compared um, to your body size, how big was it? Uh, at least five times plus. Dang! Yeah. Yeah. And that was a youngling. Yeah. Dude. Oh shit! There's, those things get massive. This was apparently quite a small. One. To me, it's still, it's still massive, but after the fact, yeah, I find out no, it was a small guy. But now, did the other guys see it? Th- that's the thing, dude. No one else saw it. Oh man! Literally, nobody else saw it. So because I couldn't get down, all the other guys are deep down there in the reef. I'm at the top with Looking this whale crabs shark. And, shit. <laughs> and I'm just like, here, it's myself and this whale shark completely alone. Uh, well, the boat's probably above me, but yeah. I don't notice it. Um, it was the most incredible experience I've ever had. Dude, that's amazing. This thing is just slowly like moving through the water, just like, and I mean, a whale shark is, is it's a shark, not a whale. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, it's the most docile thing. Ever. Yeah, yeah, completely. Yeah. It's like a filter feed and everything, yeah. but it still has that shark like tail movement which was a bit like, ooh, that's a bit creepy. And I'm not going to lie, it was scary, it was beautiful, but it was scary. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, that's an experience that will stick with me, dude. <laughs> and they think I'm pulling the piss. Yeah, they're, they're like, like, no like, ways. Fuck off. You're like, you couldn't even get down with your first dive. <laughs> like, you're just talking shit to make yourself feel better. <laughs> and I was like, no, like legit, there was a whale shark. Like, you're talking nonsense. Because none of them have ever seen a whale shark. Whale sharks are very, very rare. Yeah. In certain seasons, they're a bit more common. Uh, but in general, like you, you're very lucky to see a whale shark, in, in, like in your in your in your whole life. Um, it's 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 a, I almost want to say harrowing, but that makes it sound scary. It's not it's not a harrowing kind. It's just a magnificent and rare encounter. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it is harrowing, but it's it's I felt a bit like it. You know? Yeah, it, it, I guess it's, it's just a unique like, experience. It's, it's such a unique emotion to feel scared and excited and in in awe at the same time. Like, I mean. No matter what, like even knowing what I know about how docile these creatures are and the zero danger or, um, at all, it's just the, the size of this thing. It's yeah. absolutely imposing. It's. Well, I mean, my, my, my only comparison to that is we were at the the elephant sanctuary and the mm. main bull was like super chilled and you could kind of walk up to him and all that. I mean, yeah. it's the same thing. It's it's seeing something like close to 10 times your size, five to 10 times your size. Yeah. It's like, okay, cool. <laughs> 
This we is some, fun. We have some crazy shit in Africa. Dude. We really do. There's a massive fucking <laughs> monsters, bro. What is what if Americans have foxes? Yeah. Sh- uh, See, in foxes? Australia, everything wants to kill you. In yeah, South true. Africa, everything's just bigger than you. It's bigger than you. <laughs> America doesn't necessarily want to, but it can. Yeah. I mean, let's hear it. America, bison, bear. They got them. Yeah. Okay. True. We don't get bears. Yeah. Do we get bears at all? Just no. me. <laughs> <laughs> South Bear. <laughs> Represent. Represent. Um, so, so, yeah, anyway, so they didn't believe me at all. Eventually, they were convinced by the, the skippers. They know that there, there was one. Funny enough, with the same family. Different occasion, though. Um, Surprised they invited you back. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's oh, the way I shot Ken again. <laughs> must, must be my, my charisma. Yeah. Uh, so, now we're going back. And, and the dad, who's, I mean, really not, super nice guy, super smart, intelligent guy, whatever. I don't know what happened, but we were all rolling backwards off the boat. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think he rolled back a bit later than everyone else by accident. Because the, the point of all rolling back at the same time is to stop hitting each other with your equipment. Fair enough. Uh, so no one's in the way. You're all rolling back simultaneously. All good. And he was a bit delayed, unfortunately, next to me. And I'm in now. Everyone else, he comes flying down and his flipping oxygen tank hits me square in the noggin. So I'm like, oh shit. Now I've got a legit mouth concussion. Um, well, I thought I was dizzy and stuff. I probably shouldn't have gone down, but I was like, no, I'm, go- I'm getting down. So anyway, we, we, had, we had the dive, um, awesome dive. Get back up to the surface at the end of it. And everyone's like, everyone's staring at me. I'm like, what, what's up? And they're like, dude, there's blood all over your face. I'm like, oh, no. I'm like what do you mean? Like inside my mask? Like there was blood floating like up in my goggles kind of thing. Okay, not, not that much that it was like dangerous, yeah, but I mean, there was invisible. a lot of it. So it was a combo, I think, of, of the whack on the head and also like you get what's called mask, mask squeeze, okay. which is when uh, basically the pressure in your nose and whatever from your mask, wearing it and coming up, um, uh, your blood vessels tend to like burst a bit and stuff. It can happen. It's super um, casual. I mean, your blood I usually, yeah, I usually get like a it's... small nosebleed after diving. It sounds gross, but it's, it's kind of normal. It's not, okay. not too un, unheard of. Um, but this one was particularly bad. I think combination of the whack of the head and this thing, it was just a, a weird experience. I was like, this shit's dangerous, man. <laughs> <laughs> and then on a, on a, on another dive, um, I think this was with my dad in Zanzibar, if I remember correctly, uh, I was a bit older now. But there was um, this really cool clearing where we all kind of went down. So like just past the reef, we went under and there was like the sand kind of bank, which is like a known spot for for kingfish that kind of, which is like a good eating fish. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, that like basically school past and they just kind of go into like, like school and like a, like a swirl around you. I uh, don't know what it's called when they do that, but anyway. And so really cool kind of viewing spots. So we sat there and, and watched all these huge fish go by awesome and then um so it's kind of reaching there this, this was towards the end of the dive now and now we're kind of starting to ascend while these fish are, are, are around us and okay kingfish is kind of i wouldn't say it's tuna size because tuna are massive or kingfish bigger or smaller than tuna no they never grow i mean tuna grow big tuna are massive i bro. mean if you think about they grow to roughly about a meter in length mm. i don't think they get bigger than that um i mean they are fast swimmers as they well. are, these things dart through the water yeah they they are tuna shaped i mean they have the same Mm, um mm. dorsal fin and kind of it's a very in the same family i think probably yeah don't quote me on that i haven't done the research on that. both game fish yeah anyway so on the way up now this one decides to have a fucking hissy fit with me and it starts attacking me bro it like leaves the school and it just rams its itself into my chest and like full force it was like really really painful i was like shit I was like, what the hell's happening? And like, I'm going, cause, okay, so this is at the, the, the safety stop. So as you ascend out the water, you have to have like a, I think at five meters, the kind of decompression stop, because uh, you can't go up too fast so you get decompression sickness. Um, so you chill there for, I think it's, it's like five at five, or I don't know if it's five meters at, at five for five minutes, or I should really know this being an advanced scuba diver. I forgot, it's been a while. Uh, but anyway, so waiting there, and this thing keeps like, coming at me. And eventually, one of the other divers like yanked me away because it was about to charge me again. And I don't know what was going on. What I was wearing was just a black wetsuit, but for some reason, it t- didn't dig me, dude. Was your like zip not shiny or something? It, it might have been something like that, just catching its attention. Yeah. But, so that was that was pretty creepy. It ended that dive, and I was like, "Fuck you, kingfish!" And now I hate kingfish. That's super freaky. Yeah. I'm trying to I'm trying to think. Is kingfish the same thing I'm thinking of? I'm thinking of um, a Larry. I don't know. People just say kingies, I think. Yeah. Because, okay. 
King Mackerel. It's similar. Okay, it's not the same thing I'm thinking of. It's actually longer than what I'm thinking of. I'm thinking of Valeri. Um I know a guy named Leary. <laughs> um, okay, honestly, I'm not going to do it now. But yeah, that's pretty much the, the kind of weird shit that's happened. I've obviously had lots of other really, really great dives where nothing weird happened. Uh, beautiful manta rays and that sort of Ooh, thing. Oh, that's all, beautiful. Oh, really awesome to see. Yeah, uh, there was this one really cool reef in Zanzibar as well. It was probably one of my more shallower dives. And again, as I said, this, this is why snorkeling is great too. The best stuff is actually like probably around 12 meters down. Um, you don't need to go down to have a great time. Open Water 1 is is great for, for most things. Um, so yeah, we hit this really shallow reef. It was, I don't know what kind of reef formation it was, but it, it was way less than 12. It was probably like, I felt like seven meters down or something, which you could literally, yeah, that's you were right there. You know. yeah. Anyway, so you're up there and you look down, there's this really cool manta ray pass underneath us. Didn't hang around longer. That was also one of my favorite sightings. Uh, but yeah, that's the cool shit I've seen, uh, scuba diving. Uh, share your experiences too with us if you want to and we can yeah, let us know. check them out yeah. I've never been one for um, deep water excursions or anything have like you that. ever snorkeled oh yeah no I've snorkeled okay um, uh, I've got no no issues with snorkeling or anything like that if I'm chilling on top of the water no mm. problems uh, I grew up in the Transkei and we actually we had a cottage that was close to the ocean so mm. I kind of grew up there and I mean it's the wild coast it, it's so heavy and hectic that it's <laughs> it, it's it's not even worth going there but yeah. i mean our rivers and all that it's it's pretty great well in the trans guy a lot of people catch fish for their fish tanks there i think there's a well pretty, pretty, pretty you say that so um it was just kind of funny enough i mean i met you and you were super into your fish tanks mm. and all that i then met my girlfriend and she is just as obsessed with fish tanks and all that oh, no. she doesn't have one anymore she has but she just hasn't really had time to to put the effort into it mm. um, but we went down to the cottage and literally we so um we have this old tank there that yeah. every time we went down for a couple of weeks we'd always go and our mission would be to find some cool stuff and put it in there but i mean yeah. we didn't put effort i mean we got a few black tails and yeah the, you, the random like cool fish. Yeah, yeah like you find a rock, rock pool like the dumb stuff so we always used to fill it up with that and kind of be on our way and then she got down there and she's like no 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 like we're doing this properly mm-hmm. so, okay cool whatever I don't, I've never yeah. seen anything cool here. She's like, you got to look. Yeah. So we went into a couple of the pools and now my girlfriend's favorite fish is a goldie. Okay. So if you can think of a goldie, it's a saltwater goldfish with purple eyes. It's the so most it's also beautiful known as thing. A, as an anthea. As an anthea. Words. Yeah, that's that's the word. Um, it's I mean, it's beautiful. They're really nice fish. So we, like her goal, she's never seen one. Um, she's seen, sorry, she's seen one um, and she's caught one before, but it's one of those fish that she doesn't see often. Mm-hmm. So now we go around, uh, we find like two random little goat fish. Um, that was all cool, good and well. And uh, two little, um, they, they kind of like look like these like long little worm things. Do you know what color it was? Slightly brown. Okay. Yeah. I, I, it didn't, yeah, it had like a black and brown stripe through it if I remember correctly. Cleaner ass are the blue and black stripes. And you get these like red ones with like kind of yellowish stripes. I forget what they're called. I think mm. they're called six line rats or something like that. I'm not actually sure. I'll we'll find out. So we find these cool little rascoid fish. I'm stoked. I mean, it's better than this random black tail and other little critters we've been finding. And then we stumble into one pool and she freaks out. There's a Goldie. Oh, nice. It's an Anthea chilling in the pool. Okay. So she's like, okay, calm down, calm down. <laughs> Speaking to herself because I still don't quite know what's going on. Yeah. And um, yeah, so we go under this one rock and not only is there one, but there's a mate. Mm. Yeah. Q, Christy and Brett sitting at this rock pool <laughs> for the next three hours <laughs> while the tide comes in, mm. getting burnt to smithereens, trying to get these goldies. No luck. <laughs> Why are you struggling so much? <laughs> they, so basically they'd found their way underneath this little rock formation. Mm. And so it was one massive cliff of a rock with a yeah. deep kind of like little inglave in okay, it. Yeah. Um, and nothing's movable. And I mean, mm. you don't really want to go around sort of like moving shit around. No, yeah, you're not to, no, you kind of want to keep everything as it is. So we couldn't move anything, couldn't do like, we yeah. got so close. I mean, the thing would like swim up to like the end of our net. Yeah. And then as we move the net, we just bugger off. Yeah. Like they knew. <laughs> Did you have one of those cool kids nets, those little wooden stick ones? Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if these are a thing in any other country, but in South Africa, yeah. if you go to any place close to the beach, guarantee there's a little shop that sells buckets and yeah. little nets. <laughs> That's buckets and these little nets. Yeah. <laughs> um so yeah i mean that that's generally like my extent of snorkeling and all that i mean and i love it I, I've, mm. I've been to aquariums all around the world um oh cape town has a fantastic one called the two oceans aquarium 
It's really top notch. I have been in there, um, but we didn't spend a lot of time. Dude, it's um, so good. Uh, my, my, my ultimate is Singapore. The Singapore mm. Marine Center is like, it, basically it's it's on Sentosa Island. Yeah. Now, Sentosa Island is like one massive theme park. Yeah. And um, they, a lot of their stuff is all about rehabilitation for a lot of the dolphins that they have mm. in the area. And then they just have these massive tanks. I mean, like th- these tanks are, you actually can't fathom it until you stand in front of it and you just kind of like watch the manta rays like floating over. That's awesome. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's so cool. Yeah. So, I mean, like, I love it. I, I love that kind of stuff. I'm just not as like yeah. into it as I'm going to go snorkeling in the deep dark waters. <laughs> yeah. Um, actually speaking of cool aquariums as well. Um, I was in, I was in Hong Kong and we went to, um, I think it's called ocean park, okay. which is a, like an aquarium slash, um, kind of Disneyland type vibe really. Dang. But there's a bit of everything there. There was some pandas. What? It was, it's a, it's a weird situation they got going on there, but there was another one, which I, <sighs> Honestly, it sounds bad, but I can't remember if it was Hong Kong or Japan or Korea because <laughs> I did all that in like one trip. But there was one um, really, really awesome aquarium, but it, it was mostly freshwater. Oh, but, well. but it had those those um, arapamas um, and arowanas, which is these really huge, I think it's the biggest freshwater fish you can get. Okay. Is that the arapama? Let's make sure I'm not confusing the two because they're, they're related. The one's just bigger than the other. Oh, yeah, you would have seen these in um, mm. a few of those discovery shows where the guys go yeah. to the rivers to and find those river monsters and all the, that. The, the absolutely massivest things ever. I, th- I think it is second only in terms of length to the sturgeon fish. I think the sturgeon's bigger. Sturgeon's massive. Um, but yeah, they're awesome. It just That was probably one of the best. They had electric eels, they had all the cool shit, dude. Um, I almost really remember who that was. Anyway. Yeah. Okay, so with us being in the Eastern Cape in South Africa, uh, we are quite fortunate enough to be home to uh, a little town that um, is now renowned for discovering, rediscovering, Hmm. an animal that has been thought to be extinct for, what, 68 million years? How cool. Yeah. This is that town's claim to fame. Uh, I actually lived across the road from our, our museum here. Uh, like literally, uh, I really? walked out my front door and I stared straight into the museum. Oh, awesome! And um, I never ever like. I mean, I loved it. I went there all the time. But I mean, weird fish thing with arms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm talking about is the coelacanth. Now the coelacanth is basically what they're now calling the living fossil. It's been thought to be extinct for the past 65 million years. Okay, the coelacanth or something. The coelacanth. Did Americans and. I feel like I'm throwing a lot of shade in Americans. People in other countries <laughs> say coelacanth really weird. Oh, Coelacanth yeah. or coelacanth or something strange. It's coelacanth. The pr- pronunciation, like the phonetic pronunciation is, is legitimately S-E-E-L dash U-H dash K-A-N-T-H. Coelacanth. So now the coelacanth, the, the reason why, I mean, other than the fact that they thought it was extinct, um, is it's one of the few fish that kind of tar... Uh, they they, they, they they tie that evolutionary um, lineage, if you want to call it that. Like, yeah, it's like the fish that you see walking out of the ocean. Yeah, exactly. On all its fins. Yeah. So they're still alive. Um, there have been a few more discoveries uh, since uh, this original one was found in 1938. Uh, it was actually found by a local fish- fisherman in um, a little town close to East London. By little, I mean it's because it's of the river, um, a place called Chalumna. Um, by the museum creator at that time. Um, Luke, you say her name better than I do. Marjorie Courtney Latimer. Is it Marjorie? Because this is spelled super weird. But okay, Marjorie Maybe Courtney Google Latimer. Maybe I'm just butchering <laughs> No, no, thing. you are right. M-A-R-J-O-R-I-E. I, my reading is just horrible. So um, this fisherman found it, phoned her. Uh, she then went up to the fish and she took a whole bunch of photos. Actually, I can't take photos then. She took a whole bunch of drawings and sketches and dimensions. And she sent it off to Rose University, which is in Grahamstown, which is... Um, about an hour and a half from East yeah. London uh, and the prof- professor of ichthyology at that time uh, who was um, L- J.L.B. Smith if I remember correctly mm. she sent it to him and um, she asked him if this was a coelacanth he then replied back um, with like one telegram just saying most important preserved skeleton and gills 
equals mm-hmm. fish described like in capital letters as in the- <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i mean they've now found this um this creature that's supposed to be dead for for millions of years we um in our museum this is like a stuffed version of it eh? i don't know if if it's just a, a a cost of it or if it is actually it that's just been there is a version of it there yeah. and then they've taken that version and made a cost of it because there's actually two of them there. okay yeah and uh but yeah it's it's creepy as man. oh it's so creepy i mean obviously it's yeah pretty scary looking thing but yeah i mean it it it, it really is a cool kind of um i mean it's a dinosaur if you want to call it's it it's a creature of legend man relicanth from pokemon is obviously based on the coelacanth really yeah okay, well, I'm, uh, i know pokemon just not that well okay makes sense um i mean w- another cool thing about them is they contain what they call a rostral organ i don't know if you know about this Mm-mm. basically it's like this gel like blob on the front of its head mm-hmm. um and it it can kind of induct electricity in a way Whoa. um not 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 hectically i'm um, it, it can basically use this to detect prey okay yeah so it's not any sci-fi thing it doesn't zap you with a bolt yeah of it doesn't zap yeah. you the bolt of lightning but it's something <laughs> that um not many people know about yeah i kind of found which cool. i think is pretty cool so yeah it's a large gel like cavity um on the snout and mm. um it has three pairs of canals out of it that kind of detect fish around it am i right in saying that they named the place i think this is from way back i didn't research this but they named the place where they caught the coelacanth latimer's landing in the name of Marjorie Courtney Latimer. No. So our harbor, yeah. that section is called Latimer's Landing. Mm. Um, but this was caught in the Chilumna River. Now, okay. So which is a little bit away. Yeah. Because right. yeah. um, everyone, okay, actually, to be honest, I fall part of this as well. Uh, I thought that it was caught in our harbor. Mm. Um, but that isn't true. It, it's just that section of our harbor is named after her. Okay. Because. I think she, I also thought it was caught like here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what was caught here was um, there was a massive. There was another fish that was caught in a harbor. Mm. Um, I think I don't know if it was an angel fish or whatever it was, but it was massive. Uh, it was all, it was it was caught in a harbor and also something that hadn't been seen in a while. Yeah. Um, probably should look into that. But yeah, that is a coelacanth. Um, they are pretty big. I won't lie. A, no, cel- they're, they're big. a, a coelacanth can grow up to being the length of a full size human, um, yeah. about six point five feet um and 198 pounds so that thing could take you down if it wanted to i wonder how they managed to catch it because i mean these things are supposed to like live super deep down it was caught with a net cool i wonder if you could keep one in a fish tank <laughs> a very very large fish tank <laughs> with like a high pressure density <laughs> yeah um one, one other thing with the ocean uh it, it, it's definitely it's definitely something that like intrigues the living daylights out of me like mm. i found it intriguing more than like and i love the ocean. yeah uh even more like the deep dark ocean i don't yeah. ever want to go there mm. but i just love the things that live there i, lo- I, I, I love the th- everything about them the look the it's, it's so alien man we, it, it's people so are alien. looking to the skies for for aliens and shit do we have them right here yeah they're just in our oceans yeah. um the, i mean one one of the <laughs> one of the fish that kind of always comes up when they talk about deep dark is the the fang tooth fish mm. have you ever like it's a creepy fact i can't even close his mouth yeah yeah yeah, literally i mean it's creepy 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 it it looks like uh it's like half translucent with these like really freaky eyes Mm. so that that in my head has always been the image of like those scary things notion to only find out they don't grow longer than your hand yeah they're (laughs) tiny i was like what (laughs) most things are really small i was like expecting this thing to be like this really creepy like mass no it's tiny (laughs) i feel lied to i also i've heard about um the, the the anglerfish as well or football fish I don't know oh the one the with the thing. little um yeah. yeah but like they as well don't get that big you think they're massive but they're i think oh they were massive i think they're the size of a football hence the name kind of thing you know makes I think, sense i think you might get a couple of different variations that are quite a bit larger than the other ones but i think on average they're quite small yeah the, the fish they're extremely about is the anglerfish it basically has an antenna sticking out the front of its head with uh like mm. an, an, bioluminescent an, yeah bioluminescent um bait basically that's what's called the anglerfish yeah. um so it draws in stupid little fish and then mm. kind of chomps them up what's always creepy about that one is the male ends up latching onto the females and then, oh, the, yeah. and then the, it kind of gets kind of absorbed into the female's body and they kind of merge so you can you can never detach he's not part of her body Hectic. and he exists as a living pair of gonads just to constantly supply with sperm no way 100 percent, dude it's creepy as the, oh, the, the size of the male is like super small and the females is a huge mother truck. oh really yeah that's insane fish have it backwards man the females are the pretty ones yeah 
Tough so love. It's not, right? not actually always. Maybe in the deep sea creatures. <laughs> <laughs> I think the deep sea creatures just have a hard laugh no matter what. Yeah. Um, so uh, I, I kind of always love doing a little bit of digging, especially going on to National Geographic because they always have like the coolest things because um, the ROV bot is currently going around our mm. dark ocean or deep ocean at the moment. So two two 2.8 kilometers down, so mm. 2,800 meters down. Uh, well, Mariana's Trench is 11,000. Is the Mariana's Trench the deepest? I think so, yeah. I think as far as we know. Um, yes, it is. So this little kind of forest of weird is um, basically a section of like rock bed. And it's got these like floating uh, structures in them. And they're kind of just sitting there like perfectly straight up floating around. I've got a video here. Uh, Luke, I'll show you. Sorry, and, listeners. Yeah. Oh, that's dope. Uh, I'll, I'll put up a photo to show you guys on our Instagram. So follow our topic podcast on Instagram and we'll kind of send all this stuff through. But it's so eerie. It's like pig noses. Yeah. But all these little things are different shapes. Um, a lot of them are, are they're, they're called um, glass reed mm -hmm. and a few of them are called glass snails. You wouldn't be too surprised to see this stuff amongst like shallower corals. You know, some of these look like um, mushroom corals and whatever. But um, to find this stuff deep down where there's no light um but it, it's just like this is eerie actually they're like on there like these tall little stalks it looks like fungus they're like mushrooms yeah yeah things. that's actually true eh? um so i i think if you go look at the one of the dr seuss books what's the um yeah. wally hears of who or whatever horton hears horton hears you yeah. sorry my uh wally, wally. <laughs> <laughs> well who's where oh, where's wally, where's wally <laughs> close yeah. enough um so yeah so I kind of did a bit of uh, searching around those because I mean that's what kind of interests me. I go mm -hmm. I go and find like the the unknown things yeah. down uh, deep dark. Deep dark. It is deep and it's <laughs> dark. Like deep and dark. <laughs> <laughs> wow, no, that's very cool. The ocean is a is a great mystery. What what still um, what I what I love about it a lot is like I, I kind of feel jaded with with all the stuff we found on the on the on the in the world we've, see, we've seen everything now satellites yeah. we've, we've pretty much got everything covered there's still so much left oh there's there. so there's, much there's so much to still see i i wouldn't be surprised if we haven't even seen half the creatures that are in there well ocean. i mean what they say like 70 percent of the ocean still hasn't been yeah. like explored exactly I mean, yeah it's crazy I and mean, yeah like on the surface level it's pretty much all the same but i mean the climates and everything different especially the deeper you go yeah so i mean that kind of stuff can kind of happen i mean it, it's these research teams that like they they can't even go like out far enough mm. because of resources and all that um I, I don't think have they even made it to the bottom of the marina trench i know david cameron tried i don't know, I don't know. um i don't think so if they have it it, it wasn't a person they've, i think they've they might have gone to the bottom but only with those unmanned drones yeah those rov I, yeah. I know i know um david cameron didn't go he did go down but i don't know how he tried yeah. yeah he tried to go down um but still it's it's the section of water that's undiscovered yeah, I love the ocean. It's all wet and shit. <laughs> 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 but yeah, uh, thanks guys for listening um, to this week's episode. Yeah. I enjoyed it. I love the topic, obviously, about the ocean. I um, hope you guys found some fun in listening to us ramble about it as well. Yeah. Uh, another cool topic in a similar vein I would like to cover at some point is outer space. Oh hell yeah! So I'm sure that'll be a, an episode coming up yeah, sometime soon. Definitely. But I mean, any any kind of cool discoveries? I mean, Luke went through all these um, scuba diving stuff. If if you got some cool things, let us know. Mm. Um, well, I can wait. I don't want to hear about you seeing a clownfish. <laughs> don't be that guy. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So thanks for tuning in and give us a like, subscribe, do all that cool fun shit. Follow us on Instagram. Follow us on Instagram, and we'll see you next time. Next time.